when I was a child, we used to, all of us kids in the neighborhood used to play all hours. So we'd get home from school, we did have homework, we'd get it done, we'd go out and play. After dinner, we would go out and do sorts of things, ride our bikes around, play stickball, baseball. We had this one thing we used to do was we call ourselves SWAT teams. <laughs> we would go around each house and try to sneak through neighborhood yards and end up by the river and boat yard and make our way back. But no matter whether we were right next door in the neighbor's yard or all the way over by the river, my father would always be able to reach us anywhere. He had a distinctive whistle. So anywhere we were, when we heard that, we'd hear it and our response would be, coming! <laughs> Both of our lessons today are about being called. They're about recognizing also a particular voice. And I think <coughs> even more importantly, they're about our response to that call. Now, first we had Isaiah. He's standing in a temple in a holy place. And the time, I think, must have felt like it stood still. Because he knew he was in the presence of something holy, awesome, something other. It was a terrifying sight. We hear about it and we can't imagine, but a terrifying sight to see seraphs and angels singing the smell of incense. And he knew, Isaiah knew, that what happened to anyone who looked upon God, anyone who looked upon God, would surely die. And so he quivered and he quaked. And then an angel touched him and cleared away the fear and his sense of unworthiness. In that moment, God called Isaiah. Then we have some men on the shore. They're tired, they're hungry, sore at the end of the day of lowering nets and raising them up. And it must have felt pretty bizarre to have some guy ask for a boat ride. But Simon Peter takes him out and listens to Jesus, who tells him to drop his nets again. Nets that he just finished cleaning, by the way. And lo and behold, a load of fish is hauled in, swamping the boat. And like I told the children, it's not a special fishing spot, not a secret location, not a special boat. But the boat and Peter are overwhelmed. Peter is awed and is only beginning to realize who Jesus is. He knew he had met Jesus, but he's just beginning to realize who he really is. And then, he gets a little afraid, but Jesus says, don't be afraid. He gives him some comfort, some assurance. And then Jesus goes on to give Peter something else to do, something bigger than he'd ever dreamed of. These men answered God's call. That in itself, to just say yes to God, seems miraculous. Because really, when we think about it, how many of us would drop everything that we're doing and go and follow when we're called? I can't, I can never get this image out of my mind of Ebenezer Scrooge in Dickens' A Christmas Carol in relation to these stories. Scrooge can't or won't believe his eyes and ears when a ghost comes to visit him. He puts it down to a bad piece of meat that he had for dinner and it was giving him bizarre dreams. And Has anything like that ever happened to you? You had an encounter with a stranger? Maybe somebody who asked you to do something odd? Maybe it was a dream that stuck with you when you woke up. How do we know that it's God calling us and not a bad piece of meat? Strangely enough, I had a dream last night that woke me up. Now, if maybe it's because I live on a sheep farm and the lambs are never being born this starting to be born this week, but in the dream, I, for some reason, I was leading a line of, sh of lambs. They're on a, on, all on, on a rope. 
then when I woke up I, in the morning, I, I remembered the dream as I was kind of going about the morning. And I remembered uh, a couple of years ago when I first moved to the farm, I helped hand raise a couple of lambs without feeding them. And as adults now, if I go out into the pen, um, I went out there for the first time, you know, a year later, and I was talking with a friend of mine, and this one lamb, one sheep came up to me and just started butting my hand, and she heard me talking. So every subsequently, when I go out there, I'm like, where are my girls? And they will come up, because they, they don't know my smell or how I look, but they know my voice. We know God is calling, because we know that voice. There's a special way that God calls us. Ultimately, how God speaks to us, or calls us, or signals to us, in the end, doesn't really matter. What matters is how we answer that call, how we respond. I think our texts, the message in these lessons today, is about being called by God. It's about being disciples. And that message, of course, is preached over and over and over again. We can say, yeah, God, I know that story. I know what I'm supposed to do the right thing. Kind of gets to be, you know, old hat a little bit. But think of it this way. God reaches out to us because God needs help. Isaiah recognized that God needed help when a power greater than he was touched him and healed him. As James C. Howell put it, he said, God, the ominous, robe-clad, glorious one, needed something. <laughs> Jesus walked the shoreline and asked the fishermen to come with him. Their new job was to be to seek out living needs. Their job was to be about providing sustenance for the new community that Jesus was building. And Jesus never said it would be easy. There's always a risk in following him. But like those tired and sore and hungry fishermen at the end of the day, who didn't feel like they had another fishing trip left in them, Jesus comes to each one of us in different ways, to different people, in different moments. But Jesus comes to us, too, when we feel like we've got nothing left. Jesus comes to us when we might feel like we are not worth anything, like Isaiah, and gives us a purpose, and gives us hope. I don't know about you, but I really want to be a part of that.